it's Trish from With Love For You, and this month we will be making a Boston Cream Poke Cake. This recipe is very easy to make, and it just takes a little more time than some other recipes do because you have to cool between the steps, but it's got a little bit of everything that people will enjoy with a nice yellow cake, vanilla pudding, and a chocolate ganache frosting. So here we go. Um, the first thing that I've done is I have greased and floured my pan. And I've got my oven preheating to 350 and we're going to go ahead and prepare a yellow cake based on the directions on the package. And this recipe you will want to take some time to make it just because the different uh, phases of the project take a little bit of time to cool. So we're going to go ahead and prepare the cake let it cool and then we will poke some holes in the cake and uh, prepare and fill the cake with the pudding which then we will also let cool while we prepare the um, chocolate frosting and then uh, once we spread that on there we will let that cool as well so i'm going to go ahead and prepare the yellow cake mix according to the package directions i'm going to bake it in this um, 13 by 9 glass pan, uh, which again I have prepared just um, greased and floured lightly, and then we will return. So to my stand mixer, I have added the uh, yellow cake mix, and I'm going to add three eggs, one cup of water, and a third of a cup of oil, which is according to the package directions. I will mix this for approximately two minutes until it's all incorporated well and then we will pour it in the pan and bake it according to the package directions. So I have finished mixing my batter and I have poured the mixture into the prepared cake pan. I'm going to bake it at 350 for between 23 and 28 minutes until a stick inserted into the center comes out clean. Some of the other ingredients that we will be needing as we move forward with the recipe are two boxes of instant vanilla pudding mix, some pure vanilla, milk, a 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips, butter, and some heavy cream. So I've just removed the cake from the oven. I baked it for right at 25 minutes and the toothpick in the center of the cake came out clean. So we're going to let it cool for a bit and once we um, have it cooled down we'll go ahead and poke holes in the cake using the end of a wooden spoon. Uh, to get ready for the next step. My cake has now cooled off a bit and what I'm going to do is poke holes all over the cake with the end of this wooden spoon. This will allow for the pudding that we're going to create to seep into the holes that we're making and we're going to pour the pudding mix all over the cake before it's set up so that it can absorb and leave the cake very very moist. So you'll want to make plenty of holes in the cake and this will give the opportunity for the pudding to seep down into the holes and create nice little pockets of pudding within the cake when you slice it. So I'll just keep doing this and then we will prepare our pudding mixture. So for the next step, we're going to go ahead and create our pudding mixture. I've opened up the two boxes of vanilla instant pudding mix, and I'm going to add them to a bowl of four cups of cold milk. And I'm going to go ahead and whisk that together. And we're not going to let it set up. We're going to go ahead and pour it directly on top of the cake while it's still in its liquid form. 
And then we're going to refrigerate it to let it thicken up a little bit while we make our ganache. And to this, I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla just to give it a little extra vanilla kick. I'll go ahead and give that a little mix. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour the mixture over the cake. Making sure to get it into all those holes that I created with the spoon. And the remaining mixture will soak into the cake, leaving it nice and moist. And once you pour your pudding over the cake, you're going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator to chill and thicken. I've got the cake in the refrigerator, uh, still chilling. It's been in there for about 45 minutes. And now we're going to go ahead and get started on making the ganache. And this is the chocolate topping for the cake. What we're going to use for the ganache is one and a half cups of heavy cream. We're going to add that to a saucepan. And what we're going to do is be warming this cream mixture over a low heat, not quite to a boil, but until it's got just little bubbles. We're going to add four tablespoons of butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, and we're going to go ahead and cook this over a low heat stirring occasionally until it is warmed through and we actually we want this mixture to be hot but not boiling and this will allow for the chocolate to melt when we pour the cream mixture over the chocolate so I've had this cooking for a couple minutes over medium heat and you can see that it's getting some bubbles just around the side there but it's not boiling so this is getting very close to the temperature that we want it. We want it to be pretty hot so that it can melt the chocolate when we pour it in but not to boiling. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the heat now and add it to my chocolate. And what we're going to do then is let this sit for about two minutes so that the chocolate can soften up in the heated cream before we start to mix this together. It's now been a couple minutes and we're going to go ahead and start mixing the chocolate into the cream mixture. And you'll notice that when you start mixing it, the chocolates have the opportunity to start melting and when you stir it, it'll be a little bit grainy at first, but if you continue mixing it, it'll turn into a beautiful ganache, which will let cool for a little bit before we pour over our cake. So I'll go ahead and continue stirring this and we'll return in just a moment. So you can see now after about another 30 seconds of stirring, that the chocolate is nearly all the way melted into the cream. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to stir it just a little bit and then I'm going to let this cool for about 10 minutes before I pour it onto the cake. So I removed the cake with the pudding on top from the refrigerator. It's been about an hour and you can see that the pudding is nice and set on the cake. I transferred my ganache into a bowl that it'll be easier to pour from and I'm just going to go ahead and pour the ganache on top of the cake and this will create a beautiful topping 
once it sets up and you'll want to refrigerate this for at least four hours once you get the ganache on the top and it's even better if you let it sit overnight to let everything just set up really nicely but as you can see the ganache pours on there nice and smoothly and once it chills it'll just create a lovely top for the cake so that's it and I will go ahead and refrigerate this for like I say at least four hours um, this one is actually going to sit overnight for our group tomorrow that's coming over but we'll go ahead and give that a chill and it should be delicious I thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this recipe. We'll see you next time.